Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a few things uh, before we get into the regular announcements. Uh, if you turn your attention to the uh, bulletin, uh, you'll have in there, of course, the list of people who are in need of our prayers this coming week. I'd like to say a couple words on, on a couple of those. Karen and Roger Greaser have headed off to Florida uh, earlier this week. Um, about a month ago, she received a cancer diagnosis. It's lung cancer. It's a fast-spreading, um, small cell type of cancer. And uh, in all honesty, she doesn't expect to make it back here this year. Um, they are going to seek some treatment for that, but she would desperately love to have your prayers as she goes through this process um, and prepares for whatever the journey brings her. And of course, many of you have been asking about Richard Bernath. Richard will be released from the hospital probably this week. Um, he'll be going home for hospice care. Uh, there's nothing imminent, yet at the same time, um, there's blood clots on the lung and uh, they're not going to seek further treatment on his tumor. Uh, and so it's a matter of hospice care and uh, ensuring that he is comfortable. Um, once he gets home, I know that he would uh, enjoy visitors and uh, people to stop by and, and uh, share some time. Uh, yesterday, uh, even as he was not 100% there. He was cracking jokes and in good humor and um, just plain 100% Richard Bernath. And that's the way it should be. Remember those people in our prayers as we go into our worship service today and throughout your time. A couple other things uh, to note with uh, uh, regards to what is happening in the life of your church. Um, we, uh, we uh, are still collecting flood bucket items and um, uh, health kit items. Those will be being loaded onto a truck, but we will be collecting those in ongoing fashion. Uh, so make sure that you pick up a list and um, see what you can uh, pick up and donate with those causes. Uh, you can always donate uh, to UMCOR. They have uh, advanced special lines for really any of the disasters that you are reading about. Uh, or seeing in the news, uh, just note on your check when you make that donation specifically what uh, you would like that to go to, or if you would like to just go to generally UMCOR. Remember, this is one way that in giving, you give 100% to the victims because through our apportion giving, we already pay for all of the administration of those issues. Um, we have a sign-up table down in the narthex to begin sign-ups for the pictorial directory. Uh, we'll be doing the pictures October 29th. Uh, no, that's not right. Yes, it is. October 29th and 30th. Uh, that's a Sunday and a Monday. So if you want to uh, make sure that you are able to come ready to take your picture right after church, get right down there and sign up. That time slot is probably available. Or if you want to make, pick a special time on Monday or, or whatever, uh, be sure to uh, uh, get in there and sign up for that. Uh, it is also open to anyone uh, that you happen to know, friends or family, neighbors, members who are not, people who are not part of the church, who you know just could use um, the opportunity going into the Christmas season to do a family portrait. They would not be required to show up in the directory, and yet uh, their time in the setting counts towards uh, the uh, different ways in which we gain uh, credits from LifeTouch in putting the directory together, which is always important. So it's an opportunity to share that opportunity with others. One last thing, uh, I'll share this also with the Sunday School, uh, the Youth Sunday School, but I will not be available. My wife reminded me Wednesday evening uh, for youth group this week, so we will not be able to have youth group this week, but it's just this week. With all that said, stand and greet each other in the name of Christ.
Please join me in the call to worship. Sin speaks to the wicked, and they do not revere God. But happy are those whose sins are forgiven. Pour upon us, Holy Spirit, a cleansing of our hearts, a cleansing of our ways. For we come in this hour of worship and praise to love, to serve, to live in the light of the Lord. may be seated. Failed to mention as I was talking about those in need of our prayer that Anna Funk is recovering nicely from knee surgery. She's in rehab and hopes to be uh, home in her own bed real soon. In your newsletter this week, I had reprinted a letter uh, by our bishop, Bishop Greg Vaughn uh, Palmer, who is a member of the Way Forward Commission. The Way Forward, of course, is studying the issues of homosexuality and how they uh, affect our church, and I have given frequent updates on the work of that committee. I'm not going to go into all that today, and I think that his uh, pastoral letter to the conference is, is adequate in saying where things stand to this date and some of the things that he would share. But it's weighed on me this week to remind you that the reason I bring this up, while it's important to the congregation and will be important as it unfolds in the life of the church over these next couple of years, it's not the real reason I keep bringing it up. Keep bringing it up because I see this often in the things that I read, alongside all the other things I keep up on. The discourse that is taking place in social media and on the news feeds and in the comments of various articles that is getting more and more hateful and threatening over matters of opinion and relatively small issues. I get, I get the importance of it. I've said a couple times, if we want to divide the church, we have a flag, suggest the flag be removed. You want to divide the church that doesn't have a flag in their congregation? Suggest one should be placed. I get both arguments. I understand the importance of both. I understand how we ingrain within ourselves the values of both. But this week, as I held the hand of people who were facing 
an end that they can see. The last thing they cared about was whether NFL football players kneel for a prayer or for an anthem or for any other reason on a football field. The level of hatred that we throw at each other has gotten to be toxic. In the life of the church, the Way Forward Commission, the battle lines are no different. But yet, in prayerful, considered, respectful, loving opportunity, we come together and have dialogue from the extremes of the positions, from the most heartfelt and ingrained, entrenched ends of the poles. We come together and have conversation over what God wants us to be. And while there is still a great deal of expectation that we will find ourselves in 2019 or 2020 dividing over this issue, we will do so with a sense that we have tried our best to stay united, and that we can respect each other's positions and recognize that God, God will be served by disciples in whatever we get to. I bring it up so often because it is a shining example in the midst of a world that is so torn and divided of how we could be. We only chose to open our hearts to one another to respectfully talk through the things that divide us. We are all the children of God. Christ came on the cross that all might find salvation. And there is no asterisk next to it. No byline. No caveat. Just simple, unmerited grace. Something to consider as we turn to God in prayer. Almighty God, pour out your Spirit upon all of us this day. Give us a full measure of your peace, your grace, your understanding and seeing all the world as sacred, all the world as worth saving. all the world as redeemable children of God. We find so many reasons to divide ourselves, so many opportunities to place ourselves in various camps. Too often what we find is when we stand up against one another, we stand up against you. For your image is embedded in the heart, the soul, the image of all people. In your heart, your redeeming power, your grace is equally available to all.
temper our spirits that as we move forward, we might act in following the example of Christ. That we might see each other face to face. Recognize that image in which everyone exists. That spark, that soul that comes from you. And while we may disagree on details and points and whole issues. We can always respect the life each one cherishes. In these ways, we fulfill the words of Christ in the prayer he taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. invite the children to come forward for the message with Gloria.
Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? Amazing. Amazing. Nice. I like your pretty glasses. So you guys had a good week this week? You enjoying the warm weather? Yeah, it kind of still feels like summertime even though it's now almost at a close. And some of you might not have had school maybe a couple days or a day or two. Maybe got to sleep in a little bit because of the fog. That was kind of exciting. All right, I'm going to ask you guys a question. I want you to think about, have you ever compared yourself to someone else? Have you ever wished that you could be or do something that someone else does? It could be an athlete. It could be one of your friends. It could be a teacher. Have you ever thought, oh, I really wish that I knew as many Bible verses as Pastor Jim or that I could play the piano like Susie? Or I knew about computers like Matt. Have you ever, have you ever thought thoughts like that? Where you wish that you could do something that somebody else does? Well, we're actually not supposed to think like that. Because you know what? You could look around and you're going to find someone who's always going to be able to do something better than you. Just as you're going to be able to do things better than other people. We all have our own special talents and gifts. The Bible teaches us, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are all created by God, each one of us special and unique. You have all you need to be who you are and who you are meant to be. God has given you all that you need to be the best you. We are also created in Christ Jesus for good works. God has given you an amazing body, the brain and the heart, to be able to make a difference in this world. If you think about Everything that goes on in your body every day, things that your body does that you don't even have to tell it to do, whether it's pumping your blood or helping you breathe or helping you grow and get strong. God has a plan for each one of us, and it is our job to use our talents to find our best life. I'm going to have Matt put up a picture on the screen up here, and I want you to think about yourself as a lovely plant in a garden. You may be a flower that perfumes the air, a vegetable that brings nourishment, or an herb that heals. The plants in the garden are different, yet they are all important. Together, the unique shapes and colors and fragrances are beautiful and useful. So the next time you walk by a garden, you, th you can think about, you might be like a garden. There is something that you can contribute, just like the things that you find in those gardens every day. Let's pray. Lord, please help us to find the shape of our life, your plan for our life, and to do good works. In your name we pray. Amen.
The scripture for today is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, and not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. I lift mine eyes into the hills whence cometh my help. My help is in the name of the Lord who makes heaven and earth. Grant a blessing on this time spent that the words spoken and words heard might be one and the same. Spoken and heard will be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Oh boy. You want to read it, it's down there. Somehow it's not adequate. As I sit here and ruminate over the things that have happened to me this week, it's not adequate. It says what needs to be said. I go into this long thing about the history of the Bible and waste the first two pages of at least my scripted text to trying to get it all set up, and then I get into salvation and walk you through that, but it's not what we need to hear today. There's a serious question get through 20 minutes of listening to the sermon to get to a serious question. we got to start with a serious question because it's the only thing that matters. Yesterday. Who heard what yesterday was supposed to be? Armageddon. If not Armageddon, at least the rapture. My goodness, how many times have we gone through this over the course of the last 20 years? Some guy has a calculator and figures out all sorts of numbers and comes up with a date, and that's got to be it, by gosh. And, and the sun usually comes up the next day. One day it won't.
as much as we make a joke out of those kind of things, mostly because it's right to make a joke out of them. Jesus himself said, I don't know the day or the time, so I've never figured out I need to figure it out. But when he says that, that means there is a day and a time. If not as a global reckoning, certainly as a personal one. So there's a question which was asked me this week as I held someone's hand. Are you ready? Because this person suddenly figured out they had to be ready. Are you ready? I see a couple of little head shakes. That's good. But I don't see many. I gave my stock answer. The one I just said. Jesus didn't say he had to know the day or the time. Why do I have to try and figure it out? That's not what they were asking me. How do you know that you're ready? A little confession. My wife will hate that I say this, so will my kids. My daughter would really run out of here. My family has a history of heart things. My dad had his first heart attack at 45, died at 54, which I'm quickly approaching. I always figured that, you know, my, my timeline is a little shorter than most. That's just the way it is. Family history plays a big factor in all that not planning on doing anything immediately, but, you know, it's just the way it is. Are you ready? Because the next moment is never guaranteed. And so the question has to be really looked at and thought about. Salvation is everything. But more than being everything, it's really the only thing that matters in Scripture. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. No matter what level of pedestal you choose to put yourself on, or the person sitting next to you, well, maybe not next to you because you know them too well, the person sitting three back and one over from you. No matter what pedestal you put anyone on, we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. Now, it doesn't mean that we're all axe murderers or, or bank robbers. At least I don't think so. It's the little things. It's the little things that we do without even thinking about it. The little white lies that we tell to protect somebody else. It's dishonest. The gossip the great new story we heard that, gosh, everyone's got to know. But they don't. It's probably not yours to tell. The funny little jokes. The problem with jokes is no matter how funny they are, someone has to be the butt of the joke. And so you devalue them. I already spoke about the hatred that has just become toxic everywhere. 
it leads to violence. And too many tragic occurrences that we've already seen displayed time and time again. So it's necessary that God intervene into the world and try and do something to reconcile us because this is not the plan God had. And you can get into original sin however you want to get there. But through it, we mar that image in which we were created. And it is only by the grace of God that we can be rescued from it. So God sent his prophets. He sent his judges. He sent his commandments. And only proved that we were more mired into the sin that we created for ourselves. So he sent Christ Jesus. And by whatever theory or direction you want to make for how the cross works to bring us salvation, it comes to the bottom line that Jesus suffered and died on the cross that we might be reconciled to God. not only reconciled, but given a promise of everlasting life and resurrection in Christ, fulfilled by Christ's own resurrection. So salvation has a hope, a purpose. but does it really exist in our hearts? Do we really hold on to that faith in such a way that we can answer the question, are you ready? Here's the piece that I never wrote. Because too often in the Methodist church, we're too polite to go beyond that. We ask the question, but we leave it to you to figure out the answer. Because we want you to figure out your own answer for it, your own way, what makes it comfortable for you. And if the seriousness of the question is so great, and we can't leave it to that. It matters too much. It comes from what we've been talking about really for almost two and a half years. It comes to putting faith into action. Practicing it on a regular basis. Taking that grace that we are given in abundance and sharing it outward with others. Which makes it more real in our own hearts and it makes it real in somebody else's. Because my real answer when I was pressed, I gave my stock one, they wouldn't take it. Are you ready? Yes, I am. But, if this were truly the moment, there's still work to be done. And I didn't do it. I 
I'm ready. But is the person next to me ready? Because God makes them my responsibility too. One of the terrible things about faith makes it easy to talk about. It's a journey. We talk about the faith journey, the pathway, the studies, the opportunities to take next steps. The difficulty is each step is just as difficult, if not more so, than the last one. And the journey never ends. We don't talk about that a lot in confirmation class. We don't talk about that in membership class or in Bible study or really anywhere else. No, we just need attendance and we might want a new roof. By the way, they started on it. It looks nice. measure of a church should not be in its attendance or its apportionments how well you like the pastor's preaching it's whether it's drawing you closer to God and making you more prepared to answer the question that matters most in the world are you ready? If you are ready, is your neighbor ready? Is your family ready? If they're ready, Is the person you don't know living somewhere way off in the world ready? How do we help them get there? We were in Sunday school class a while back and Susan mentioned a song. very telling song. I don't remember who who sang it. She or maybe my wife will jump up and say what it is. You don't remember. I haven't said it yet. It's okay, you don't have to remember. We call the church the body of Christ, but if we are the body, why aren't the hands moving? Who? Casting Casting crowns. Thank you. I knew you'd know it. Why aren't the feet moving? Why isn't the body of Christ moving? Because we've left it dead in the tomb. God resurrected the body. Promised resurrection for each and every one of us. The expectation is that we have found it. We are here. We sing it out loud all the time. Yes, our assurance in it may fade from time to time. We may be struggling with it on occasion from time to time. But you know what? You only have to answer the question once. John Wesley, the great pillar of our faith, questioned and worried about his salvation right up to his end too. You're in good company. But the way that we kill that doubt and become more prepared and more able to answer that question is to act and fulfill the message and make the body move.
This world needs it more today than it's ever needed it before. And it can start here, in this place. If we choose to grab hold of this promise of salvation that we have been given, and to make it alive within us, through us, and around us. I hope that was better than what I wrote. Amen. As the ushers come forward, I invite you to complete the response form on the side of your bulletin and place it in the offering plate as it is passed. Let's pray. God, our heavenly King, we rejoice that you invite everyone to a place of purpose in your kingdom. Through Christ, your Son, you give us a vision of the world as your vineyard, where each person can contribute the gifts you have given. Free us from envy and comparing our circumstances to others. Give us strength by your Spirit to live joyfully as generous servants of your realm. We, pre we present your tithes and our offerings with thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. This next song is a little bit of a new song for you this morning, and I do guarantee that the words will be up there and you will not have a blank PowerPoint slide. We have a little glitch in our PowerPoint this morning in case you haven't, I'm sure that you've noticed that already. Um, and we, did, we have a new person working back there in the technical area, and he's going to do his best to get the slides to keep up. So go ahead and go forward, buddy. Next slide. There you go, there's the words. Here we go, this is amazing grace. Shakes the whole 
created in the image of God, reconciled through the way of the cross, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, filled, filled, filled with the redeeming power of the great Holy Spirit of God, empowered to go forth into the world and be the body of Christ, living, breathing, sharing. Amen. Amen.